The Torah is probably the book that uh, Christians use as well, the, the Old Testament use as well to um, defend eating animals. This is something mm-hmm. that I get uh, constantly on the road, everywhere I go, especially college campuses. We have these street preachers who they'll come up and try to convert me and I'll say, well, how do you feel about animals? And immediately they go into using scripture to defend horrible things. And it hasn't, it, it didn't start and stop with animals. The, the, oh, yeah. The, the old the, the good old book was uh, used to defend uh, human racial slavery in America. It right. was it's it's always yeah. been used in this way to defend villainy. And I wonder how does the vegan because what, what this channel is mostly about trying to get people into activism. And sometimes I see even grizzled activists out there who are used to talking to people get stumped when mm. people start spitting verse and book, you know, and I don't know what, what's, what's your advice when it comes to that. Someone breaks out the Bible. Always. the It's always the old Testament. Cause yeah. once you get to Christianity and he's born in a manger, it's really hard to, for me. Like, it, like if, if someone's Christian, I just bring up Christ and it's a little, it's a little easier because, <laughs> right. But with the Torah, you don't have this um, kind of role model character in the. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I, I go to the garden of Eden, the original creation of all life. God says it right there. The very first chapter of the whole thing is vegan. Um, everything else is permission, but there's no obligation. Um, people also bring up dominion, obviously. Mm-hmm. That's Genesis. And- became the title of a very important documentary. Mm -hmm. Um, And the classic rebuttal to that is, no, it's stewardship. It is beneficent, godly. It's that in the same verses of the creation of humanity as being endowed with godliness. So what is that? Mm. What what would, you know, Christians, what would Jesus do, right? Yes. What would God do? What would God want? Well, we know it says it right there in the Garden of Eden in Genesis. Eat the plants and the and and the fruit. Um, That's godliness. The idea that we are endowed with moral reasoning. Uh, Oh, we're we're better than the animals. Well, we have moral capacity that Mm -hmm. they don't. So it's not that we have the license to exploit them when we don't need to. And of course, Mm. that's the other big thing is we're talking about ancient people who didn't have the same nutritional understandings. They don't know what what germs are. They don't know what B12 is. They don't know any of the, like. So, you know, I mean, all the ridiculous, well, you're defying what our ancestors did. Ludicrous. They didn't know what vitamins were until the 20, mid 20th century. I mean, it's like. So the, and, and the, and, Pretty much the uh, mainstream Jewish view of humanity is, and even of Jewish law, is that we evolve. We continue to learn new Mm. things about the world, about ourselves, and we can integrate that into what we find in our classical texts by identifying the core values that underlie the specific literal pronouncements in the in those texts uh judaism has never been like oh well literal application of that verse there's always a kind of wrestling and an attempt to understand well what does it mean uh and to extend that to say and how do we apply it to our time in order to be the most moral that we can be given our circumstances that's what god is asking of us metaphorically Uh, our sense of purpose, and again, back to just, you know, to steward the earth and to partner with the divine by bringing more holiness and goodness into the world with compassion and justice uh, to kind of recreate that garden. Um, And fast forward, the messianic visions of our prophets. Imagine a world with no violence towards any animals. The wolf lying down with the lamb. Right. Uh, the lion and the calf. The lion and the calf, like, right. Even obligate carnivores are not going 
to you know it's going back to the garden of eden right yeah it's so funny because you know i always say lion and la- the lion lays with the lamb because i like the triple l's and no one ever calls right. me out on it no one ever calls me right. out I, I i always uh i intentionally misquote because of that right. and people um but <laughs> it's 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 interesting because what you what you just described i think um i think definitely a uh, it describes the human condition, but it also comes close to giving us a meaning, a meaning of life, uh, yeah. giving us a, a, a human purpose, which I think is something that's elusive in, in modern, um, in modern experience, you know, does, does, it seems controversial what you're saying. And uh, even though it's not controversial for me, of course, and right. no, one no one's who's in the live, who's watching live, but I'm sure there were people, there will be people watching, who watch after the stream is over when how how has been the reaction what has been your your experience when it comes to the reaction of other people of your faith or people in general um because it does seem a little revolutionary what you're saying yeah i uh, mostly the resistance is um from the uh, people just not being open to change uh, or feeling judged. Uh, you're being moralistic. You're pushing your agenda. Um, my agenda. My big, my big broccoli agenda. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, yeah. Um, and then just, well, you know, live and let live. Well, but are you letting live? Mm-hmm. You're not letting live. Um uh, and you find that this religious because you're, you're you're coming at veganism, and 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 it and it, and it sounds like veganism. It doesn't sound like a plant based diet or something. It sounds like veganism. So the animals aren't property. They aren't here for us. They're here with us. That they're it's their planet too. This is all. This isn't just a plant based religion um, discussion. But you're coming at veganism from a religious kind of from the flank, from the the the, the fringe, from the flank that no one is, expects. Right. Um, how 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 of religious folks? I mean, yeah. they, they're calling so, them. So so when when I do interact, you know, so I'm I'm not an Orthodox Jew. Um, mm. Most of my interactions with uh, like the fellow Jews whom I interact with mostly are. Uh, Jewish life might be important to them, but they're not necessarily using Torah and Jewish law as the absolute guide to all their decisions. They're just ethnic Jews. Or, uh, uh, well, yeah, they're cultural Jews. They're uh, they certainly um, uh, might feel strongly about certain rituals and certain traditions um, and certain moral obligations that we have towards the world, towards people. Uh, but they're like, well, but you know, this is Judaism. Like we've been eating this way forever. And, um, it's always I, been this way. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I just push, I say, well, um, part of our way is to think and act morally and to look at the reality, uh, of what's going on today. Um, and, uh, you know, I think people, they're going to see what they want to see, yeah. you know, and, and then, and then when it is with the, with the more Orthodox folks, yes, they're going to say, well, but it says in the various law codes that you have to eat meat in order to have true joy on Shabbat. Uh, well, it doesn't say that. It says that for many people that eating is joyful. Uh, so you should have delicacies. You should have like more special food. And if that isn't what brings you joy, then eat the food that brings you joy. Um, yeah. But I mean, Orthodox and Hasidic, these guys that are doing the Kaporos and, and with the uh, chickens and everything, I always feel that they're, that they're a fringe element in a religion that they're kind of like this right wing of the religion. And like most religions, even, even ones that, um, that seem, well, like like the one, like the like what the the majority of people in the Middle East, uh, it, they seem like the majority of Muslims are, are 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 in this extreme faction. It's not the case. Most people of religion of religion of any kind of religion want to be modern. They want to still be modern humans, right? And and the right wing conservative branch is almost like this this last. They're clutching at straws. They're not going to be around very much longer. They're not. They, 
I, I mean, I hope not. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is part of those more traditional uh, segments of society, one of the ways that they enact that is they have more children. And mm. so uh, those, uh, those... Those children still have to grow up. They still have to grow up in a world. I mean, look, I mean, you don't have the crazy Catholics like you used to that uh, because they, yeah, they had, and those, they were having lots of kids too. They yeah. were having lots of kids. And right. then those kids grew up in a modern environment and realized that their parents were crazy and they're, and, and they, and they still call themselves Catholics, right. but you know, they don't, they're not um, tying the chain around their thigh so they can feel the pain of Jesus. They're not doing that stuff, you know, like. <laughs> right. Right. I, 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 I'm ambivalent about the, you know, just thinking within my own people in terms of those who don't really feel to me like my people, but, you know, when outsiders start criticizing us, yeah. I have to, you know, kind of hedge myself somewhere in the middle. Like, yeah, I'm going to yeah, be critical of sense. them, but, you know, please recognize that they are a fringe uh, and that I, there's a lot of ways I don't identify with them. I, I, I they're, in many respects, they're becoming more and more insular and they're doing that whole like doubling down and clinging even more tightly to those old ways. Um, mm. So I don't, I don't know, you know, it's like, uh, I, um, uh, I, I'd like to see, I, 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 my understanding is that some of the uh, protests and efforts to combat the Kaporos uh, activities in like Lakewood, New Jersey and in Brooklyn mm -hmm. uh, and other parts of New York, that there's been some progress in terms of, uh, you know, from a welfareist perspective, just for them just not to be treated as horribly. Yeah. As but uh, you know, maybe there's a, a a stronger legislative approach to to really just cut it out. Uh, it's difficult it's because yeah, yeah, because there's there's laws on the books that would prevent stuff like that, and yet they don't enforce them because yeah. of because of religious freedoms and because they, no one wants to be seen. Well, up until recently, no one wanted yeah. to be seen as anti-Semitic. Uh, that would be the worst thing you could be. Uh, <laughs> it, up, my whole life, that's one of the worst things you could be called. And yeah. yet, um, and yet today, it seems like a lot of that is changing. And I want to get to that, but uh, before we do, because I. This conservative branch of every religion seems to be yeah. those ones that we that we focus on. That, that right. as, a, as a as a global secular culture, we tend to focus on these right wing fringes of every of every religion and every sect within those religions. And even if you talk about um, nations, we focus on the super fringy ones. And right. if you talk about Americans, like who do we focus on? Those fringy weirdos that everyone will point at and say, this is what America is. And it's like, that's not my experience in America. Right. Right. You know, and that's not my experience with Jews. I, I've, I've talked about um, veganism for the last 20 years. And I've been told that, uh, that well, Jews use goat skin and the horn mm -hmm. and, and that, and that by that, that veganism is anti-Semitic and, <clears throat> Because we are saying that we shouldn't be using the horn or the goat skin yeah. uh, stuff, right? What do you? Th but but what's funny is that the Jewish people I meet they don't have goat skin everywhere. They don't even have one of those uh, the, one of those horns. I don't know what that horn's called. The the one that they blow for the uh, actually you can see one behind me next to the. Oh, I see it. Uh huh. It's a shofar. Um, a shofar, right? And uh, it 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 is a. It's a difficult area for those of us who, uh, or uh, particular for those who are Orthodox and have embraced veganism in, let's say, ninety nine point whatever percent of the ways they interact with the world, mm. uh, but then um, are still like, well, you know, I recognize that there's a difference between what's permitted in the Torah as opposed to obligated. We're not obligated to have factory farms. We're not obligated to slaughter a single animal for food um, or to eat any products of an animal. Um, we're not obligated to, you know, to, to wear animal skins or furs uh, as part of our regular clothing, but there are these religious objects that... Mm are obligated to come from animal skin. 
uh, and then, then, and then there's the horn. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard. I, um, if, if there were like really good, durable materials like hemp or something that people could like developed and said, here, we're going to make all these same ritual objects, uh, using plant based, uh, products, uh, the Orthodox would say, well, you know, until some rabbi is going, whom we trust right. to say, you know, we're definitively changing the law, you know, that's going to be harder for them. I would love to see outside of the Orthodox world that I participate in that kind of shift, but we all pretty much rely on the Orthodox who mm. are trained and committed to creating those products for us. Uh, so so it, it's, it's very tricky. The one little bit of a fallback uh, to be um, maybe sleep a little better at night uh, about all that stuff is that number one, all of those products um, can, according to traditional Jewish law, come from animals who died naturally mm. um, or, you know, accidentally who weren't, you know, so roadkill even mm. um, who were not uh, slaughtered uh, intentionally. So that's number one. And then number two is that, you know, if we talk about indigenous religious uh, engagement with a kind of sanctity for the animals that are, whose lives are taken, uh, that is the original consciousness in terms of using all the parts of the animal's body. Uh, no animal is slaughtered in traditional Jewish religious life uh, only for the skins or the horn. Uh, those are animals, sadly, in our day, it's too much of it is factory farming. Right. Um, but in terms of what's what it had been traditionally and maybe still to some extent um is that those are uh products that are coming from animals being raised for food mm -hmm. you know we don't like that but <laughs> yeah but it sounds like there's still hope that that could change as well and that it yeah. wouldn't be okay so yeah. okay so that and, and yeah and that's you know that that, that that that's a tough area but it's it's minuscule in compared to the right yeah to like we could still work to end factory farming and still not even just be welfareists in that regard mm -hmm. uh, even though you know we know that there's still going to be people who are not going to come all the way with us at least you know not in our lifetime um there will be holdouts uh but we can make considerable change and we can push for the liberation of animals yeah. and hopefully hand something off to our uh, inheritors, the next generation to continue to push that agenda and to save our planet and uh, to just continue to expand our consciousness of how we live with the rest of the how we interact with the right exactly and just to make our planet a more compassionate place uh and, and move more towards that vegan ideal that's uh that's the outlook i take 